Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to do a more complicated combination of parallel and series circuit and trying to find the impedance on that circuit. Notice that the uh, series branch has a resistor and inductor, and the two parallel branches each have a resistor, and one of them has an inductor, the other one has a capacitor. So we can consider the impedance of this branch, the impedance of this branch, and the impedance of that branch, like that. And so we're going to then utilize that to find the total impedance of the circuit. And when I have enough board space left, I might also try to find the current maybe in one or two branches and maybe the voltage across one of the branches just to see how that's done. All right, so how do we find the total impedance of the circuit? Well, first of all, we have to take the impedance of the branch and add that to the impedance of the series portion of the circuit. So let's start with finding the impedance of the branch first. So let's do that. So impedance of the branch, and I'll call it Z sub BR for branch, and since it's a branch, and so that would be equal to the product, so it would be Z2 times Z3 divided by Z2 plus Z3. Again, we use the product over the sum method, and notice I labeled this as Z1, this as Z2, and this as Z3. So to find a solution to that, I need to know what Z2 and Z3 is, so let's write that over here. We can write, well, let's start with Z1. We'll do them all. So Z1 is equal to, we have the real part, 25 ohms, plus the imaginary part, which is 15 ohms. That's the reactance of the inductor, and since it's an inductor, it's 90 degrees ahead of the resistance, so therefore it's a plus I15 ohms. If we want to write that into the magnitude and uh, phase angle form, of course, now we have to take the the two uh, components of the impedance, square them both, add them together, take the square root. So we take 25 squared plus 15 squared, add it together, take the square root. So we get 29.2, 29.2 ohms. And the phase angle, so that's the, the imaginary part, the real parts. So we take the arc tangent of 15 divided by 25. So 15 divided by 25, take the arc tangent of that, and we get 31 degrees and that will be positive 31 degrees. Then impedance one. Impedance two, Z2 is equal to, here we have a real part, an imaginary part, again it's an inductor, so it's 20 ohms plus I times 30 ohms, which is, again, we take the, we square these two, we add them together, take the square root, so it's 20 squared plus 30 squared. That's a 1300, take the square root, and we get 36.1 ohms. The phase angle, again, it'll be positive because there's an inductor, so it's 30 divided by 20, and we take the arc tangent of that. That's 56.3 degrees, 56.3 degrees. And finally, the impedance of the branch that has a capacitor, so that's Z sub 3, which is equal to the real part, which is 50 ohms, plus the imaginary part. Now, since it's a, the reactance of a capacitor, it's, it, the phase angle is 90 degrees behind, so that becomes a minus I, times 40 ohms. To put a magnitude phase angle format, we, multi we square this, we square that, add it together, take the square root, so it's 50 squared plus 40 squared, that's 4100, divided by, um, not divided by, but take the square root, that gives you 64 ohms. And the phase angle, do the imaginary part divided by the real part, so 40 divided by 50, take the arc tangent of that, and it's 38.7 degrees, but it's minus because it's a capacitor right here, so minus 38.7 degrees. So now we have all three impedances in terms of the complex number format and the magnitude phase angle format. So now we're ready to go ahead and find the total impedance of the branch. And so in this case, that would be equal to 36.1 ohms with a phase angle of 56.3 degrees multiplied times, and for Z th Z3, that would be 64 ohms, the phase angle of minus 38.7, and then the whole thing divided by the sum of the two, but in that case, you're going to write it into the complex number format, because it's easier to add in that format. So 20 ohms plus I times 30 ohms, plus 50 ohms minus I times 40 ohms. Okay, so when we multiply these two together, 
we get 36.1 times 64. So we get 2310.4, 2310.4 ohms squared, because it's ohm times ohms. And the phase angle here, you simply add the two angles together, 56.3 minus 38.7. We get 17.6. 17, whoop. 17.6 degrees. In the denominator, 20 plus 50 is 70 ohms, and plus 30 minus 40 is minus 10 ohms. So now we want to go ahead and change that into the magnitude phase angle format so we can divide the two. So we get 2310.4 ohms squared with a phase angle of 17.6 degrees divided by, again, we take the square of these two components, add them together, take the square root. So that's, uh, uh, that's uh, 70 squared plus 10 squared. That gives you, add them together, get 5,000, take the square root, which is 70.7, 70.7 ohms. And the phase angle there would be, again, it's the uh, imaginary part divided by the real part. So 10 divided by 70, take the arc tangent, and we get a phase angle of 8.1 degrees. And that would be minus, because we have a negative uh, 10. Oh, and I forgot the I. I don't want to forget the I in there, the imaginary part. All right. OK, now we go ahead and divide this by that. So we get 23. 10.4 divided by 70.7, we get 32.7, 32.7 ohms. And on the phase angle wise, it's this minus this, since it's negative, you add it, so we get 25.7 degrees. And so that's the impedance of the parallel branch. That's the impedance of this portion of the circuit. Now we're going to add that to this impedance, and since that's now part of a series circuit, we can simply add the two together. So now we can say that Z total is equal to the Z branch plus Z1. Z branch we just found was 32.7 ohms with a phase angle of 25.7 degrees. And we're going to add that to Z1 right here. And Z1 in magnitude phase angle format is 29.2 ohms phase angle of 31 degrees. Now notice, in this format, it's very difficult to add. So what we should do is then go ahead and convert back to magnitude and, or not magnitude, but complex number format. So this we already have in complex number format. So that would be that right there. So it would be plus 25 ohms plus I times 15 ohms. Yep, 15 ohms, there it is. But now what about this? How do you convert this back into the complex number format? Well, think about it this way. If you draw a phase diagram, you graph this out. This is 30.7 ohms at an angle of 25.7 degrees, which is kind of like this. So there is Z of the branch, which we said was 32.7 ohms. And at a phase angle, theta equals 2 25.7 degrees. So what we want to get out of that is we want to get the vertical and horizontal component. The vertical component is the reactance. The horizontal component is the resistance. So that's the real part. That's the imaginary part, R and X. In this case, of course, with the branch, it's a combination of uh, inductance and, react and capacitance. But since the inductor was bigger, the overriding factor was the reactance of the inductor. All right, so how do we get the vertical and horizontal component? Well, this is the adjacent, so we take the magnitude times the cosine of the angle to get this. So R is equal to Z branch times the cosine of the angle theta. And to get X, that is equal to Z branch times the sine of the angle theta, because that's the opposite side to the angle when we take this component and put it over there. So to find that, Find the resistance, R, that's equal to Z of the branch, which is 32.7 ohms. And we multiply it times the cosine of 25.7 degrees. And in the case of the reactants, that's equal to 32.7 ohms times the sine of 25.7 degrees. And here, let me rewrite that so it looks like a X for reactants. And so with a calculator, let's find out what that is equal to. So 32.7 times 25.7, that's the cosine, there it is, and that gives us 29.5 ohms. 
So that's the real part of, um, of the impedance of the branch circuit. And then the imaginary part, 32.7 times the sine of 25.7 equals, and there we get 14.2 ohms. Notice that it's an inductive reactance, so it's a head in the face. So what that now becomes is we have 29.5 ohms for the real part plus, because it has a positive phase angle, uh, plus I times 14.2 ohms. And now we're ready to go ahead and add the, the impedance of the branch to the impedance of the first portion right here of the circuit, Z1. Okay, add the real parts together. So 25 plus 29.5 is 54.5 ohms. And plus 14.2 plus 15, that would be plus 29.2 ohms in the, oop, that's not a really good ohm symbol, right there. And don't forget the I, because that's the imaginary part of that impedance. That's Z total. Now, if we want to, again, put that in the magnitude and phase angle format, we can write Z total, can also be written like this. Square this, square that, add together, take the square root. So it's 54.5 squared plus 29.2 squared equals, take the square root, and we get 61.8 ohms. So that's the magnitude of the whole impedance. And now for the phase angle, we take the imaginary part divided by the real part, take the R tangent of that. So 29.2, 29.2 divided by 54.5, take the R tangent, and we get a phase angle of 28.2 degrees. Okay, so that's how you find the total impedance in complex number format and in magnitude and phase angle format. Let's see, we have a little bit of space left, so let's at least do a couple of these things. What if I want to find the current leaving the source going into the circuit? And so this is the series portion of the circuit right here. We can actually take the, find the total current in the whole circuit, which is the same as the current in here, call it I. And we can do that by using Ohm's law. We know that I is, of course, V over R. And in this case, we can say that the current in the circuit is equal to the total voltage from the supply right here, which is equal to... Uh, to the voltage of the supply divided by the impedance of the whole circuit, Z total, okay? And so this would be equal to 100 volts at a phase angle of zero degrees divided by Z total, which is 61.8 ohms with a phase angle of 28.2 degrees. So, oh, there's my calculator. So this is equal to 100 divided by 61.8, so that would be 1.62 amps with a phase angle of minus 28.2 degrees. So that gives us the current entering this, this series circuit and also the current then splitting up in these two branches. If I now want to find the voltage drop across this portion, okay, there we can say that the voltage across branch one is equal to the current through branch one times the impedance of branch one. So what we would have to do here is we take this current right here, which is 1.62 amps with a phase angle of minus 28.2 degrees. And we then multiply that times the impedance of that portion of the circuit. We're looking for Z1 right here, which would be this right here would be 29.2 ohms with a phase angle of 31 degrees. And then, of course, see, I'm really running out of board space, ain't I? So then I multiply these two together. This is, of course, ohms. So we get 1.62 times 29.2. That gives us about 47.3, 47.3 uh, volts with a phase angle of, we have to add these two together. And notice that would be a positive. This is a positive 31 and minus 28. That would be minus 2.8 degrees. Oh, plus plus 2.8 degrees. And that's hard to see now, because I'm really out of space on the board. But notice, if you then want to continue on, you can then find the, first you can find the current by taking the voltage of the source divided by the total impedance, gives you the current into the circuit. If you then want to find the voltage across that, you go ahead and take the total current times the impedance of that. If you now want to find the voltage across the branch right here, then what you would do is you would take the current times the 
total impedance of the branch. So let's say you want to find the voltage across the branch only. Voltage across the branch, that would be equal to the current times Z, so that would be I through the branch, which is the same as I1, so the total current would be that, and then the branch impedance would be Z branch, that would, find, that would give you the voltage across the branch, and once you have that, you can find the current in each branch, for example, the current going from C to D is equal to the voltage going from C to D, which is voltage of the branch, divided by that would be the impedance of that branch, that would be the P to Z from C to D, and so forth. And so you can then figure out all the other components as you wish. So that's how you work with parallel branches when we have um, a voltage, uh, time varying voltage source, and we have different impedance in the circuit, both in series and parallel combinations. And that's how we do that.